five tips for working out if you're into the outdoors. So why don't you follow along and uh, let's get this party started. Tip number one, you have to have a plan. Now as a personal trainer, one of the biggest issues I have, or I see in clients, I should say, that come to me is they don't have a plan. You know, the key component is for us to be stronger, to be able to pull back our bows, to be able to paddle canoes that might be weighed down with camping and fishing and hunting gear, be able to haul in our mobile systems. Uh, you know, as we get older, that gets a little bit tougher too. And you older folks out there know exactly what I'm talking about. But we need to be strong for that. So we have to look at our plan a little bit differently. One of the keys with the plan is that we want functional strength. Now, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of bodybuilding, you know, and your goal there is to create as much muscle mass as possible. And to an extent, I still believe that to be somewhat true because as we get older, we lose muscle mass. So we wanna make sure that we maintain that muscle mass. But we wanna make sure that we're balanced. So not only a balanced plan from a macro level, but also a balanced plan from a micro level. Now, what I mean by that is agonist and antagonist muscles. So, you know, whatever we do bicep wise, we need to equally follow that up tricep wise. Whatever we do chest wise, we need to equally follow that up back wise. You know, the other thing is in the outdoors, we use all of our muscles and we use the slow twitch and fast twitch muscles equally. You know, I see some people that are working for more endurance. They might be working more strength. They might be working faster for those fast twitch muscle fibers, those white twitch muscle fibers or they might be working slower for those red twitch fiber muscles. I am of the proponent that all of that should be worked together within the same plan. If I'm hiking back with my tree stand, I need to have endurance. If I am trying to pull a big buck up over a blowdown or a big stump, a tree that fell over, I need to be powerfully strong. I need to have strong legs to be able to pull him up over that tree stump. So, as you can tell, you need to be balanced when it comes to functional fitness for the outdoors and your plan should consider all of that. Tip number two is accountability. And you know, when I work with people, it's funny when they come up to me, not only do they want a training plan and somebody to show them the exercises and make sure their form is good and be able to pick the weights and all that good stuff, but one of the main concerns for them is accountability. One of the things I try to teach my folks is to create their own accountability and eventually to get them to be independent upon themselves to be able to get their workouts in and to do them efficiently. And how I do that is I have them create specific goals in mind. And knowing that I'm going to see that goal completed or they're going to see that goal completed or both of us are going to see that goal completed. So for instance, a simple goal uh, might be that somebody comes in and they say, I wanna get stronger. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pick three exercises for you and we're gonna focus on a bunch of other exercises, but these three particular exercises, I wanna see X amount of reps, X amount of weight done on such a date. So maybe three months out, I wanna see you perform a bench press at maybe 185 pounds, 10 times and right now they're at maybe 155 pounds, whatever it might be. These little goals are what's going to hold you accountable. Now, for you folks at home, uh, as much as I would love to train all of you, uh, you're going to have to create your own accountability. Write them down and if you have to, write them down on a sticky note and put it on that mirror or find a confidant out there, maybe a workout partner, uh, maybe your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it might be, and tell them, you know, by March 1st, I want to bench X amount of weight, or maybe by March 2nd, I want to be able to run X amount of miles in so many minutes. That is going to keep you on track. And you know, for a lot of us, the hunting season is in fall, and we are creating those changes right now here uh, in the beginning of the year. and. In reality, what we're doing right now will essentially not mean much if we fall off the wagon in June or July or August. And the key is to hold yourself accountable and hopefully over time you don't have to rely on someone else 
for that accountability component, that should come from you because it's your health in the long run. And essentially, if you think about it, it's also your deer tag or fishing season. Tip number three, and this is for you intermediate and advanced lifters. If you're dealing with an injury or you're newer to lifting, I'm gonna have you stand off to the side just for a bit, but it's to lift heavy. And you know, I see a lot of folks out there that keep everything fairly light and that's fine. And if that's working for you, that's great. But I think more people out there can lift heavier than they think they can. And once they start to lift a little heavier, uh, that's where you start to notice those changes as far as strength goes. And if you're looking to maybe add a little extra muscle mass. Now, when it comes to lifting heavy, once again, functional fitness for the outdoors, is that you don't necessarily have to lift heavy all the time. And technically, I wouldn't even recommend lifting heavy all the time. What I like to have individuals do is to add a heavy component to each set. So for instance, let's take the bench press. You throw on your weight and you're going to lift X amount of weight, 12 reps, 12 times, okay? Set number one, 12 times. Set number two, 12 times. Set number three, 12 times. When you get to your fourth set, this is a good time to then add that extra weight. Uh, those muscle fibers have been uh, torn down a little bit already from those three previous sets. And then you can lift heavy and maybe do only four or five reps with that ac added extra weight. And that really hits those different muscle fibers, those different neurons uh, that affect strength and muscle mass. And the other one is time under tension that I really like. So essentially, it might be just taking the last rep of each set and you're just adding time to it. So for instance, instead of you know doing, let's say, tricep extension overhead, okay, at this pace, that last rep, if it starts to get hard, you go up onto rep number 10 or 12, hold it up, and then it's seven seconds down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as you can tell, seven seconds is a little bit longer than you might think it is. So add that heavy component to your lifting. And the purpose of that is to create functional strength. Once again, you may have to take that big buck and get them in the back of your pickup truck and you're by yourself. And that takes massive functional strength. Or you gotta pick up that canoe that's loaded with a bunch of gear and you have to get it over a big log uh, that's in the middle of the portage. There's many times where functional strength does play an important role into the outdoors. Tip number four is corrective exercises or dealing with injury. Now, if you have an injury of any sort, please seek out your physical therapist, your MD, your chiropractor. One of the things I tell them is to stay out of the range of motion that causes pain. Pain receptors are there for a reason. They're there to tell you what essentially you can do and essentially what you shouldn't do. Not always the case, but for most of the time. For instance, if I had somebody doing 45 degrees of scaption, You'd start with thumb up and then go all the way up to level and then back down. But they may have a previous shoulder injury and that pain might not start until like right there, okay? And if that's the case, then just stay out of that range of motion that causes pain. So you're gonna start down below, you're gonna bring it up, stop a few degrees before you even feel anything and then come back down. The other thing that you wanna do is injury prevention as well. So for me, being a bow hunter and fisherman and, you know, you use your shoulders so much in the outdoors, I really take extra precautions in regards to strengthening my shoulders up, especially the rotator cuff. When I have my clients do their lifting sessions, in between their lifting um, sessions, the day that they don't lift, I have them do what I call active rest. And essentially, it's just playing a sport, walking, running, uh, but being active in a way that the muscles are being utilized, but they're not being overtaxed. And that way they are rested enough for the next session to really hit them hard in the weight room. Some great examples of active rest in the outdoors is going out and do some upland bird hunting. Uh, you know, get that shotgun over the shoulder and put a lot of miles on walking with maybe your fur friend, 
pheasant hunting, grouse hunting, duck hunting, whatever it might be, but get out there and walk. Um, another one I enjoy is ice fishing. You know, I know a lot of folks out there got the four wheelers and snowmobiles, but you know what? One of the best forms of exercise, especially in the winter, because we're usually cooped up, is get on that ice and, you know, walk to your favorite honey hole if it's three, four, 500 yards, you know, and then if you really want to make it uh, a heck of a workout, go out and get a uh, hand auger, um, put the gas auger, electric auger off to the side. And I guarantee you, if you use a hand auger ice fishing, um, if you're not in good shape, it's going to make you in good shape, you know, and scouting, bow hunting, uh, doing a lot of walking in the springtime and, you know, trimming out some trees. If you find some great spots to hunt, bring that uh, saw with you, uh, that Huey Man or whatever extendable saw that you have and clean out those areas. You'd be surprised at how much of a sweat that you can create. And that active rest that you do in between your lifting sessions is, is great. One little bonus tip I want to share with you folks is nutrition. And you know, increase those protein levels. And there's no better way to increase those protein levels than the game that we pursue or the fish that we pursue. Venison, you know, squirrels, rabbits, I mean, those are about as organic as you can get. And eat that instead of the garbage and the junk food out there. You know, so many of these foods that you see nowadays, um, I hate to say it, but they're made to make money off of you. And uh, you know what? We have some of the best food and it's sitting in the woods and in the water as we speak. So nutrition wise, you know, focus on eating what you harvest. And then garden wise, if you got room for a garden, grow a garden. And if you don't have room for a garden, go to your farmer's markets. Or there's a lot of local farmers out there. Um, they just down the road that will sell you fresh produce or fresh milk or whatever products that they may have. And, you know, try to stay away from that highly processed stuff. And, you know, there's so many of these foods that have these chemicals in them that we don't know, at least not now, what they're going to do to us years from now. So folks, get in the weight room. If you got that downtime, get yourself stronger, build up that endurance, you know, and you want to hunt and you want to fish for a long time. I don't want to see any of my viewers out there sitting in that recliner and selling all of their hunting and fishing equipment um, because that means you didn't pay attention to Oak and Iron Outdoors. I want you folks to be able to hunt and fish until you're dying breath, all right? And we do that by being strong and being fit for the outdoors. If you folks don't mind, please hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, Clint from Oak and Iron Outdoors.